Irritable Bowel Syndrome, or IBS, is a globally prevalent disorder predominantly seen in females and is characterized by abdominal pain or discomfort, combined with changes in stool form or frequency. Based on the predominant stool form, IBS is divided into constipation predominant, diarrhea predominant, or mixed subtypes. The gut microbiome, the large collection of intestinal microbes, genes, and their products, has been implicated in IBS. As a result, patients often use probiotics to treat IBS symptoms, but they are not very effective. This is partly because multiple factors are involved in IBS and we do not understand how the gut microbiome fits in a larger picture of IBS pathogenesis. In this study, we collected multiple layers of data over a six-month period, including diet, patient symptoms, measurement of intestinal secretion, gene expression changes in the GI tract, gut microbiota composition, and the compounds present in fecal samples that can originate from the microbiota, diet, or the host. We integrated all this data into a meaningful format to unravel biological relationships in the highly dynamic ecosystem of the gut. By doing this, we discovered a new pathway that is important in IBS. This involves the metabolite hypoxanthine, which is important to keep the intestinal barrier healthy. We found that altered hypoxanthine metabolism involves both the host and the gut bacteria which highlights the importance of these type of comprehensive studies in humans. We also identified additional bacterial compounds that may be important in IBS. For example, in patients with diarrhea, there was increased bacterial production of tryptamine, which increases water secretion in the intestines. These patients also seem to harbor reduced bacterial metabolism of bile acids. As a result, High levels of primary bile acids were present that can irritate the colon and increase water secretion. In patients with constipation, production of short-chain fatty acids was decreased. These bacterial compounds normally increase movement of the stool across the intestine. Based on our findings, native or engineered bacteria that produce short-chain fatty acids or tryptamine may be used to treat IBS with constipation. At the same time, bacteria that convert primary to secondary bile acids may be used to treat IBS with diarrhea. Finally, hypoxanthine producing bacteria may help treat symptoms in patients with both subtypes of IBS. One of the strengths of collecting samples over a six month period is that even when following few patients, gut microbiome changes can be identified that precede worsening of symptoms. Interestingly, these changes were not necessarily consistent between people, which explains why the same treatment may not be suitable for everyone. Overall, our study highlights the importance of longitudinal sampling and integration of multi-omics data with patient data and GI function to identify novel treatment targets.